What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, kind of a different type of video than I always do, but I've owned the Samsung Galaxy S10 since the first day it came out, it was released in America, and we finally got our first major update for it. Now this is the Samsung Galaxy S10, the standard variant, the smaller one. I do understand the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus got one UI 2 earlier, but today we're just going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy S10, but more so the features that are brought into the actual, of, you know, this is the beta right now, but this is the first glimpse we have of One UI 2.0 on the Samsung Galaxy line. Now this is for the S10, the S10e, and S10 Plus, but don't fret if you own an S9 or S9 Plus, then this will eventually come to you. Same thing with the Note 9. Currently, as of right now, I don't know if the Note 8 or the S10 are currently going to get them, but I'm pretty sure they are not. But regardless, we're going to see what's going to happen, what's new with this update. Now, I will tell you there's quite a few things that have changed, but at the same time, the core features, the core everything, the way it looks ultimately is almost the same. One thing I've noticed, though, is that it does seem a little bit smoother in terms of the animations. Now, that could be me. I don't think I ever updated it one time since I bought it. <laughs> so maybe that's probably a big enough thing in and of itself, but... Dark mode obviously came with the One UI, I think. But the cool thing with dark mode is that now it's actually standardized create throughout the whole entire OS. So if you go to the home screen, the wallpaper, the icons, they're all dimmed if you turn on dark mode. So that's a really, really cool thing. It kind of just standardizes the whole entire One UI software, which is really nice. Also, the volume icon also changed a little bit. Now, I keep getting the Bigsby button mixed up with it. As you can see, the volume button, it now is way less intrusive and... They kind of focus this all around like the focusing on what matters aspect of their whole like One UI. So as you can see, it's much smaller than what it was before, which is really, really nice. Also, when you're getting a call or you're getting notifications, it's also much smaller now than what it was before. So that is really, really nice. I like how they're kind of focusing on these smaller things, which a lot of people might not worry about, but hopefully Apple can kind of learn from this with iOS 14 and make things less intrusive. I know they did it with the volume buttons, but with calls, it's still super, super annoying. Another small thing, which is actually really, really cool, and I never really thought about this, on the home screen, the text up top, if you have a dark wallpaper, it'll automatically change to a dark text. If you have like a lighter wallpaper such as this, it'll turn into like a white text, or vice versa, I meant to say that vice versa. But if you have like a lighter one, it'll turn black. If you have a dark one, it'll turn white. Before that didn't actually happen, which caused a lot of confusion, and I could barely even read it sometimes, which was really, really funny. Another thing they're kind of focusing on with the One UI 2.0 is kind of, you know, working on your overall health in terms of, you know, you're using your phone. I'm assuming they're going to the same route of what Apple was doing earlier with their digital well-being aspect. And as you can see, you have these type of controls. So if you can see, you know, you can see your data, you can see all this type of information, how much you're using your phone, what you're using on. And I think this is definitely a cool thing. This is a start in the right direction. You have focus modes, you have things where you can turn off certain apps and permissions before and after, you know, if you want to test or study or whatever, you have that capability. And I think it's cool. I think Samsung is definitely on the right track here. Hopefully they can make it so it's a little bit easier to understand. <laughs> Even Apple makes it a little bit weirder, but they have parental controls here too, which is really, really cool. And I really, really do appreciate that. Now within this software, they also have gestures, which is really, really cool. Now I will have to take a second to find out where that's at. So as you can see right here, we have the capability within One UI 2.0 to either keep the navigation bar on or you can go into full screen gestures. Now you can go and I guess modify it a little bit. And as you can see, you have that same type of layout that you have on like the Pixel devices. So you can swipe up if you want to go home, you can I guess keep swiping up. Now it is a little bit weird in my opinion. I guess you have to like learn it a little bit. So as you can see, you can go that way. For some reason it didn't work before. I don't know what was going on there. But as you can see, you can go ahead and keep hopping out if you want to. And it's actually really, really cool. And it's like not in the way. And like I said, it's like just like the Pixel devices. You can go ahead and swipe in from the side if you want to get something else on the side. And this is actually really, really cool in my opinion. So for multiple reasons. One, you know, that new gesture based UI, which I really, really like. But also it'll remove the nav bar burning that we see on so many OLED devices. That's literally one of the worst things about OLED devices. And actually, I'll show you one thing right now. This is the Galaxy S9 here. For some reason, it's dead. I do apologize. Oh, wait, no. Yep, it's completely dead. But this one, the screen burning on this was really, really bad. And I hit the camera there. But I'm so happy Samsung actually added this into their UI. And it looks so much cleaner. It is still a little bit glitchy, though, if you can tell. Sometimes when you swipe up, it just brings up the recent app. I don't know if that's like a feature or something I have to turn off. But you can obviously go switch through. And I think it looks a lot nicer than having these like nav bar buttons on all the time. But I'm so used to seeing those on these devices that, I don't know, I'm so, I guess I have to figure it out. But 
I'll go ahead and let you guys kind of sift through the settings a little bit right here so you guys can get an idea of what's changed, what's new. But I'm pretty sure everything is pr like, it's kind of like a One UI 1.5, like what it was supposed to be. I know they already did a 1.5, but I don't think it brought like a crazy amount of features. But I do kind of like what they were kind of doing here. Now, I still think One UI has a long way to go. I definitely do like the features. I definitely do like the gestures. That's one of the coolest things, especially when you're going through and you need, let's say you're going to another app, you're going through whatever. It really is really cool and I really do like it. I just kind of hope with, you know, through time, they kind of do improve it a little bit. There's still a long way to go. I probably would not recommend you installing the beta. If you want to, all you have to do is download the Samsung members app, whatever this one is, go into the beta software and go from there. But ultimately, dude, that is pretty much it. So far, it's been super stable. I haven't had any issues. The update ran through smoothly, but I'm really, really hoping they actually go and update the Samsung Galaxy S8 as well as the S8 Plus. You know, I really want to make videos on those. I really want, I really want to see an update for those. I think those phones deserve it. It would be really, really cool to breathe some more life into it. I understand that S7 and S7 Edge are out, but Samsung could be the one of the only manufacturers to improve their software. So I really hope Samsung does it, but that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, that don't mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. I'll fuck at you guys in the next video. Peace out to them.